Hi, everybody. We are working on connecting our delta math here, creating an assignment. It's actually pretty easy to do, uh, but I'm going to be using the uh, integral version of delta math and show you how to connect it to your canvas here. Now, even though down here they've added delta math link, I never use that link. I would not recommend using that link. Uh, link is going to pro probably try to open delta math within canvas, and that's not really what you want. So. Um, there's, uh, so I'll have this kind of ready to go. Um, there's kind of two ways to do this. Um, I have found, like my preference is that I actually go to Delta Math first, uh, but you can go either direction with it. So if I do go to Delta Math first, it's uh, pretty, ooh, this is a bell. Uh, it's pretty easy when uh, you go to Delta Math first because you can sort of take your time, create, and not worry about the pressure of it being connected to canvas yet uh, so if you're doing that just it's very very easy just let's go to a standard assignment uh, I may release a video in the future about how to make tests and test corrections in there which is pretty handy as well uh, but here's standard assignment uh, just click on that and we can assign a name and all that stuff um, just for my identifier I use a2 for my algebra 2 classes and um, I would just pick whatever lesson I'm doing now uh, other people like to do, instead of singular lessons, they will do like a, a general review for the week or for the quarter or uh, for whatever the section you're on. Um, I've enjoyed uh, trying this, especially this year, trying to keep it up, to keep one-to-one -one, um, every day do a delta math. And uh, that's been a little bit of a challenge for some lessons more than others. But uh, overall, I've had really good success with Algebra 2, a little bit of a harder time with um, geometry. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull up what lesson we're on here. It's been a long, uh, nice little track out here. Um, and I think we've done, I think we're on 31. Seems right. Okay, so what I would do here is, is I would just type in Lesson 31, and now I'm going to go find some skills. Now you can look at some of these options here. Let's do that. Uh, you can do, here's the trick. Don't, don't pick this here where it says select which class you want. Don't have a class. Now, you'll notice I have some classes in here. Um, that, those are for like placements and for other things. I, I, I don't use those because we use integral. Now, if you did not use integral, you'd have to create classes and um, that's where you'd link them up. But because we use integral, just leave it blank right there. You're just going to save it like this. Okay. Now, if you want to add it to a folder, you can add a folder. Um, if you want a time limit, I don't do that for homework assignments. Solutions, yes, I like them to be able to see their answers. Um, student work, upload their work, no, I've done that for quizzes before, um, but it's not something I use very often. Delta Math videos, super helpful. Um, for especially for some that need a little extra differentiation remediation that's very helpful and then hide assignment after due um, no I sometimes will give credit someone's out or something like that they'll be able to still even though it doesn't look like they're getting points I can go back and fix that or excuse the, the lateness uh, later so I just leave that there okay so everything's pretty much default and then we're gonna go to skills and start picking some skills like what do you want them to do now uh, sometimes you got to look forward and backward uh, based on where, like Saxon doesn't line up perfectly with this. So what I do is um, I typically look at the end of the lesson, go to the lesson practice, and look at the types of questions that they're asking in the lesson practice. Now this one happens to be uh, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So I might look up the word rational. Okay, and then as I'm looking through rational, I look at some things and I see these dark blue ones are algebra one, these green ones are algebra two, and you know, sometimes I'll even dip back to eighth grade math, or, or yeah, I've even used seventh grade stuff, just stuff that helps remind them of certain things or reiterate something is good. And then it, quite often I'll have to dip into pre calculus. Um, like I said, this doesn't line up perfectly. Um, you'll see. A lot of rationals here, um, but before I pick anything, I'm going to um, kind of see what it is first. Okay. Now, some of this stuff is I'm going to put in as a, like review. Now, rational, uh, none of this stuff is equations. I see just mostly evaluations. 
sorry, uh, evaluating in the lesson practice, and then I see a lot of just dealing with rationals, multiplication, division. So let me make sure I get those out of the way first, and it looks like I have to dive all the way down here to rational expressions. There's a whole category in pre-calculus of, of um, multiplying and dividing, rational expressions. So this is probably what I'm going to lean heavily on here. So let's take a look at a couple of simplifying ones. Yeah, these, this is good practice right here. And you can go through and I'll maybe um, let's check out a couple different examples, make sure it's in the right thing. Or maybe I don't remember how to do this or want to make sure that's done the right way or something like that. I can just click on show, the answer, um, show solution and it will show me what they would see if they got it wrong or they need to see an example. Okay, so this one looks good. I'm going to go ahead and include it. So I'll go back here and hit add and it puts it over here and I want to, it's going to ask me how many I want to have on there. So I'm thinking, um, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait until, I, but it, this time estimate is critical. Like I don't want to overwhelm the kids with homework. So I make it a target about 45 minutes is kind of 45 minutes or so is what I kind of set the expectation. Now some kids will take a long time, some kids will get it done in 20 minutes. So, uh, but typically I, I average around 45 minutes uh, per night uh, per lesson. Uh, let's see what else is up here. Simplifying rationals. Okay, so now this is interesting because uh, this is kind of like what we just saw, uh, but notice this word problems types here. This is where you can kind of get into the weeds and see the different types of problem types that they could see. Now, if I hadn't taught all of these yet, I might say, oh, I only want to show, I want to, I want to uh, maybe only do the monomial canceling out. And I could assign subtypes and just click off the other ones and assign now. Uh, but because I've um, taught all these, I'm just going to go ahead and assign it regularly and hopefully they'll get a good mix of this. But again, this is all review setting up what I really want them to practice, which is multiplying and dividing rationals level one, because that's what was going on there. So let's take a look at that. Ooh, there's a nice one. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of factoring and canceling and reciprocal stuff. That all looks good to me. Let me just check the problem types here. Just multiply and divide. Yeah, we're, we're doing both of them. If, for example, if Saxon said we're doing multiplying first and then we'll do division in a later lesson, I would have to split that up and just assign the one problem type. But here we are, looking good. All right, that looks good. And let's just make sure they're not throwing anything crazy here and they're covering everything from the lesson. Um, and now mind you, I, I do teach the lesson as Sac through Saxon. Um, so they see all those things and then I use this for the practice, the guided practice where I can see feedback, give feedback, all good stuff. All right, uh, this one looks fine. This one's getting a little, little hairy, uh, but I, I want them to be challenged too, so I'm not scared of giving them a, uh, some tough ones. Uh, let's check out the level three. Ooh. Okay, and if this is above your level of math, I apologize for that. Uh, but I do, one of the problems I want to make sure they saw is the multiply and divide um, in one single problem. I want them to be able to know what to do in those situations. So this is pretty good, this is pretty good examples. Um, I like all of this stuff. And then as you see, it goes on to adding, subtracting, rationals. That doesn't cover this in this lesson. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, now I'm looking over here. I see that it's 58 minutes. It's a little long for me. Now you might say, well, I can handle an hour of homework. Yes, but the ones that are really going to struggle will take longer than this. And so I don't, I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Um, when I get levels one, two, three kind of thing, I usually trim them down a little bit, especially review things. I'm going to say, let's give them three of those. Simplifying rationals, I don't know, maybe three of those. That's not that bad. Um, and maybe, let's see what happens if I do. So right at 46 right here. Um, so it might go four, four, and four. <clears throat> mm, nailed it. All right, 43 looks pretty good. Um, again, we're not overwhelming them. And, and I do give them about maybe 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how the lesson goes, because I'm not doing homework review uh, in, in Algebra 2. They're able to do most of their homework and get reviewed and feedback on it when they finish their assignment. So it's, it's instant for them. It takes time, um, gives time back to the class time. <clears throat> so I'll typically, in the beginning of class, I'll just go ahead and assign um, or um, teach the lesson, and then boom, they have their 
homework with about 20 minutes to go and then I circulate and sit with them and make sure they've got it down and I can see who's struggling and who's not and that's what I love about teaching. Teaching should not be just sitting grading papers all day. It needs to be interactive. It needs to be connected student to teacher. So that's my heart in this uh, this whole thing. All right, so this looks good. I'm just going to go to create assignment. And now it says, ooh, ooh, you have not chosen any classes. That's because I'm using integrated. If you didn't use integrated, you'd have to go back here and you'd have to go to um, select your classes. And you'd also need to pick a due date. Do not pick a due date if you're using integral because um, it, it, Canvas will assign that automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the assignment. I'm going to save anyway. It's just going to save it. Um, and that's all looking good here. Okay. Now, let's jump over to Canvas. All right. So I was able to open up the Canvas assi at assignments now. Uh, for some reason, it was being a problem, but now we're good. Um, so I'm, this is my identifier here. I just use DM lesson uh, what were we, 31. Um, this is just for the kids. It's within the Algebra 2 page, and that's their identifier, and it makes it a little bit shorter so you can kind of see it. Uh, yeah, sometimes I use L31, but I think I use Lesson 31 here. Um, but shorter identifiers allow you to see in your grade book a little bit more easy, easily. Um, so that's just a little tip, especially when you, when you do this. Like, I have way more grades than everybody else, I think, <laughs> because I can do, I have like a, a grade for every single day there in class. Um, and because it's so easy, you can do a, you could do a warm-up graded warm-up assignment every day if you wanted to and add zero extra work for you because um, the Canvas integral, um, Delta Math integral integrates it right into Canvas, puts the grades in there for you, super easy. All right, uh, I don't add a description here. I'm just going to go ahead and go for this. Now the points, I make the points variable. Now a typical Saxon lesson I assign, it's 15 points. Um, so that's 15 points. I make everything sort of relative to that. Uh, so typically if it's, I'd usually do a point per question and I forget what I had on that one. It was close to 20, so I'm just going to leave it at 20 points. Um, but again, it's all relative to everything in that category. So in my homework assignment group, which I'm going to push to change that from 20% to something else, maybe 30% and, and change up the percentages uh, for next year. But um, but for right now, this is as long as you're in that category, you assign the um, uh, points relative to the other assignments in there. All right, uh, do count this to this uh, to the final grade. That is something you'll actually check for the testing if you're going to do it the way I do for um, Delta Math tests. But I'll show you how to do that later. All right, now this is where it gets interesting. Submission type, external tool. Um, right here, you're going to select Delta Math. Now. Mine automatically pops up, so that's kind of nice, but yours may not. So you'll just kind of have to scroll through, pull up Delta Math. It should be right in there. And there you go. And it's, it's only if your campus has paid for Delta Math Integral. So you may not have this option. Now, this is something that I do that I don't know that all the teachers do, but this is uh, load this tool in a new tab. This gives more workspace for the students, so it's a lot better for that regard um, because it pops it up into a separate page or separate tab for the kids, um, which is much better than confining it to the boundary of Canvas. Um, so they need more room to work, more room to look at a graph or whatever. Definitely want to hit that if you can. All right, um, assign to everyone and I make a due date. Now this is a huge like relief for me. I make my assignments consistently due at 10 o'clock. Now I'm going to sign this on Monday. I'll teach it Monday. And so typically you'd be like, oh, well, make it due at class time on Tuesday. I'm going to make it due on Tuesday, but I'm going to make it due at Tuesday at 10 p.m. Because we're not reviewing in class, we don't need to look at this in class. The kids get a little extra time to do it. Um, you might say, why 10 p.m.? Why not 11.59? I don't think any student should be up past t uh, doing homework past 10 p.m. I think it's time for them to shut their brains down, get their screens off start to go into bed. That's my philosophy and uh, I would rather give them a little more time and have it do at 10 rather than because all of them will like to go right up until the last second. Um, so if that last second happens to be 10 they're gonna put themselves to bed at a better hour. Okay. Um, cool. And that way I'm not competing with other deadlines that are at midnight too. So I wish all the teachers would do 10 but here we are. 
All right, so this is looking good here. Everything's loaded up and ready to go. I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna not publish it yet because I don't know if I'm definitely keeping this yet. Um, but normally I would hit save and publish, okay? And I would link this right on my homepage. All right, now load this in a new window. Just click on this. Okay, now it's gonna pull up Delta Math and you're gonna notice a little bit of a difference in the Delta Math window. Uh, notice how there's not four options up here. Um, you can only see three because it's this is the new thing going on here. And it's gonna ask you what you want to do. Now, if you had not already made a Delta Math assignment for this lesson or for whatever you're doing, um, you're gonna need to go to create a new one. But because I already created it, I'm just gonna hit link to existing assignment. This doesn't mean I can't adjust it afterwards. It just means that I've spent the time making it in Delta Math and now I'm linking it. So I'm gonna hit link. There's the one, A2 lesson 31, that looks good. And notice what happened here, click on due dates. It automatically put my due date in there. Isn't that great? Um, and then you can add late dates, but I find that it's easier to just go in per student and adjust their grade based on if they're late or not. Um, they get very used to seeing that deadline and it says there's no late credit available. I don't want them to be chasing the, the late penalty will automatically get pulled out of campus anyway. So I would rather not get doubled up late that I've got to clean up later. I'll just do it, take it case by case and uh, motivate them to get their stuff on time. And even if they're on a trip or something else like that, they can, a lot of them can complete their assignments on time anyway, which is really nice. All right, um, but that's it. You don't touch anything else. Everything's good. You could adjust something if you wanted to. You might say, oh, maybe I want to do this. And then you just click assignment saved. Or maybe, oh, I want to add one more thing because I forgot that they need to practice this too. You can adjust that anytime. Um, you just might want to let them know if they've already started the assignment that there's a little extra on there. Okay, so that is it. That is how you connect your Delta Math into a Delta Math integral into the other one into Canvas so it's ready to go and once they start uh, completing their assignments when the due date passes that's when it's going to post those grades uh, into Canvas and I don't think there's the option for anything else oh there it is um, grade pass back time this is going to you can decide when it gets passed back I don't like doing it after 15 minutes or uh, manual this is just going to be when the due date happens it's going to send the grades into Canvas if you do after 15 minutes I think it'll send like if they're half done it'll send the 50 into their grade books and then you're gonna get some parent emails and stuff like that because it's gonna look like they got a bad grade even though they're just working on it still so my recommendation put it at the due date and it'll automatically go okay hopefully this was helpful I'll be making more videos for you guys to uh, check out and hopefully uh, you can start making Delta math work for you harder not smarter wait no said that backwards smarter not harder there we go <laughs>